Well, we're back with Dr. Clark, and, you know, I've got to ask you, when we were on the phone, you said, when we were talking about your journey coming out of this period of time, you can't heal unless you know you're wounded. What did you mean by that? If I pretended in any way that what I had done with uh, doing abortions was not harmful, non-therapeutic, then I couldn't ever come to a point of, of, of repentance and absolution from God. It, I had to first admit that I did it, and I was absolutely wrong. I'm sorry, but still I, I feel like the Apostle Paul, that he says, I'm the chief of sinners. I got him beat. <laughs> but that doesn't make me happy in the least because I can't, I can't go back and help those women or unless they're listening in on the program or, or, the, uh, or the grandparents or the fathers of the children. I have to start all over saying, okay, I cannot go that road, road at all anymore. I've got to do it a different way and... I've got to take the experiences that I've had and see if someone out there is helped by it. And I hope that this program helps someone. Oh, I think it's amazing because we know it will because that's what God does. And, you know, it's like uh, I've heard other people say, God can use you in a way he never could use me or, or the guy down the street or everybody is called to do what they can. And what you're doing is quite extraordinary. Um, I think telling your story and sharing, sharing the truth so that people can hear it and can change their hearts, hopefully. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it is meaningful. You said maybe somebody is watching and maybe they are. Um, let's take this opportunity. What do you want to say to the person that might be watching right now and they're doing the abortions right now. That is their job. To the doctors who are doing them, I hope that they wake up to the fact that this is not therapeutic. This is harmful, and it's harmful to them. I do not see how a person can jab a corkscrew device into the skull of a baby who is crowning to, and about to be born and kill the child and pull it out by a corkscrew, how that person can ever come to a point of doing normal childbirth and fighting to save the life of a child. Uh, something goes on of you say, well, it's not a baby. Well, it is a baby, and uh, just because he has the audacity to jam a corkscrew into the head in, uh, of, a, of a child just before it's born and say, there, it's legal. Well, being legal doesn't cut it. It's what does God think about this? Um, our lovely president said, you know, we're not a Christian nation. Well, we ought to be. I think less people would be hurt. I know less people would be hurt if we were a Christian nation. When my actions, I take responsibility for them and say, this has got to change. Absolutely. What do you want to say to the woman out there who is distraught? over an untimely pregnancy and thinks there's no other way out but abortion? Well, abortion is not a way out. That's a way of covering it over and trying to get rid of the evidence or uh, pretending it didn't happen. I've had so many people who denied that they had abortions at all or in some cases denied that they gave birth to a full-term baby and said, I don't know who it is, not mine. You know, this denial, mm. that's not healthy. That is not a way to live your life. 
there are people affected by the mom's actions. There are people who are affected by the father's actions. And it's about time that people become responsible. That's the way our nation grows. Irresponsibility and selfishness are not the road to go down at all. And it's not the doctor's road to go down either of, I get paid for it, hurrah, you know. I'm making money off of it, hurrah. Well, it's not hurrah. This is grisly, nasty way of making a living. Wow. What gives you the courage to do what you're doing now and to speak out about this? I don't know all of the reasons. I just know that I've got to do something because what has happened thus far as far as pro-life uh, movements are concerned and I've been involved in pro-life movement for many years but I don't see anything happening to stop it uh, the stopping of abortion is going to have to involve people saying enough and demanding of their government enough uh, if this is the government of the people and for the people and by the people, well, then for Pete's sake, let's do it. Yeah. Let's not sit around saying, well, maybe it'll go away. It won't. You know, it's a political issue, mm -hmm. which means nobody's responsible. Oh, yes, we are. We're responsible. So true. Do you worry about young people, enthusiastic, loving life, wanting so hard to do the right thing, going into today's medical schools and being forced into the role of, of doing abortions. It's being talked about that this or that medical school is going to start forcing the doctors to do it in order to graduate. What do you think of that idea? Well, when I went to medical school, that was not an issue uh, as far as forcing anyone to perform an appendectomy or, a, or any other surgical procedure, pretty soon you have to say, not if you didn't want to do it, mm -hmm. that people still have a right to say no. And you can say no to a medical school, and you can say no to a government, yeah. and stand up for what you believe. Don't try to get along. Well, it doesn't matter. It does matter. It mattered so with true. me. That's so true. And I think hearing your story will give a lot of people courage, no matter where they are in their journey, whether they're the person that may be faced with an unplanned pregnancy or they're someone on the side in the medical profession. I think hearing your story is going to give a lot of people courage. I hope so. I know it will. And I, I, uh, I so appreciate you coming forward with your story and so much willingness to share what uh, it couldn't have been easy to talk about. And you made yourself available to Oregon Right to Life and to our show to spread the word to people that may not have ever heard there's anything wrong with abortion. We live in Portland, Oregon. I don't think, I don't think it, it's a very pro-life state. We, we want it to be, but um, I wanted to ask you about uh, one other thing that you talked about, and you said the billboard that meant so much, one dead, one wounded, and you had a reaction to that. Of course, it was talking about abortion. Mm-hmm. It's just that there is so much harm done to so many other people that is sort of covered over. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't bring it all out, saying one wounded and one, one uh, dead. That's, that's true, but there's plenty of more people who are wounded. And if I go through my life as pretending that I have not been wounded, then my view of a number of things get warped. And I 
It's like having a toothache and denying it. Uh, it doesn't go away and it is still real and there's a cause for the pain. Uh, and every time I look at certain areas of my life, there is pain and I, I can't deny that it happened to me. And I want to do something to bring something positive out of it. Well, as I said before we started taping, we don't know who's watching. We don't know who's going to hear your story, but God does. Amen. And uh, that's, you know, that's the beauty. God makes beauty out of ashes. Yep. And, um, and that's, that's uh, what he's going to do with this. I hope so. I know so. And uh, I really thank you for every time you painfully walk down that road and tell the story, whether it be on our show or in front of the next group you go to or, or at your neighborhood barbecue or wherever it is you feel <laughs> called to share because that's, you know, I think that's God working through you and it's going to save a lot of lives. I hope a lot of people in our audience listen to your words. Um, abortion is evil, wrong, don't do it, don't have anything to do with it, right? It's icky. And, and, uh, and do your part to, to end it which yes. is what? Changing the hearts yes. of people. Do you think that's yeah. the only way? I don't think most people realize, you know, how early a baby becomes a baby. No. I mean, before the mother even knows she's pregnant, long before she ever went to a so doctor. So talking about embryonic development is important yeah. To, yeah. to people, young people. Yes. They need to know this stuff. Yes. It's not just uh, for in the medical schools, let's bring it, Bring, it's all how we began. It's important. Yes. Little yes. hands and little feet are there. They sure are. And so when we wear our little foot pins and our little it hand matters. pins, that's the truth. That's really what the reality of what we looked like at that age, right? I can verify it. You were there. I was there. Well, I thank you so much. Well, and I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad your story is getting told. And again, I just want to thank you so much for everything you're doing. And every, uh, every mile you drive to tell your story, you came pretty far to be with us today. And, uh, and we so appreciate it. And I just, I can't, uh, I can't tell you how much I know God's going to use your story to save lives. I pray that it's true. Thank you so much.